So again, yes. okay, so f, oh, f of x is not given to us. But I know that f prime of x, f prime of x is the slope of the tangent. f prime of 2 to be exact, at 2 exactly is 4. I don't have f of x and I do not have f prime of x. But at this particular point, f prime of 2 must be the slope of the tangent line at 2, which in this case, the slope of the tangent line is 4. Is that OK? Any questions on this? OK, other examples. Would you like to work on something else? Do we need to work on 34 or not? Yes, do another example, please. So you want to work on 34? Yes, Professor. OK, very good. So uh, Amanda, if you'd like to share one more time. So if the tangent line to y equals f of x, so again, I have a function. I have a point 4, 3. 1, 2, 3, 4, 1, 2, 3. So here's the point. So if, an, um, if the tangent line to this function at 4, 3 passes through the point 0, 2. So we have the tangent. It passes through 0, 2 and 4, 3. We have the function that is tangent at 4, 3. So this is our f of x. And it's asking us to uh, find f of 4 and f prime of 4. And f prime of 4. So again, we have a function, it has a point, it has a tangent at that point, and we also know that if we extend the tangent, it will cross the y-axis at 0, 2. They're asking us to find f of 4 and f prime of 4. So let's start with f of 4 first. Can anyone give us f of 4? Three. Yes, there is no problem here, right? f of 4 must be 3. There is no discussion there. Good. Now we want to find f prime of 4, which is the slope of the tangent line at this point. Is there any possibility I can determine the slope of this line somehow? And if yes, how do I do it? Either the formula or just rise over run. Yes, exactly. So I have two points. So this is the slope, rise um, y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. So it's 1 fourth. Exactly. OK, I would like us to look at problem 50. Any questions? 51 on page 151. I'm sorry, Amanda. Sorry, sorry. If you'd like to open on 151, I'd like to us to look at 51. Thank you. Okay. The cost of producing X ounces of gold from a new gold mine is C of X. So C is f of x, that's the cost. In dollars, of course. What is the meaning of the derivative f prime of x and the units? 
you can stop sharing for a moment. So what does f prime of x represent? And we have to write it in words. Anyone? Uh, would that be like the rate of the cost? The rate. Does it increase? Yes, it can increase or decrease, but you're right, increases, right? So the rate of change of cost with respect to with respect to units what will be the measurement unit the dollar per ounce excellent if you want to share again for part two What does the statement F prime of 800 equals 17? It's not 17, it's $17 per unit. Doesn't make any sense. They should, you know, dollars per unit or per ounce. Good. What does it represent? What do you think this means? F prime at 800 is 17. If you produce 800 ounces, uh, ounces of gold, the, yeah, the, gold the, rate, would be 17. the rate of change at that instant, the rate of change of cost per ounce at that instant will be a positive, an increase of $17 per unit. So the rate of change of cost with respect to number of ounces, when we produce 800 is $17 per unit. Awesome. Is this clear? Any questions on this? Okay, let's look at the last part, because there is a, another part here. So it says, do you think the values of F prime, the rate of change, will increase or decrease in the short term and then long term? What do you think? Anyone, what do you think? I think it will increase over the long term. Increase in the long term, <laughs> yes. Yeah. And what about short term? In short term, they may decrease. So short term decrease, but long term increase. This completes chapter two. So what I would like to do on Wednesday is just review uh, all limits, rules, derivatives, functions. Any questions? Graphing again a piecewise defined function. The intermediate value theorem which is one thing that I would like to, I still have a few more minutes. And there was one thing that it was a, a leftover intermediate value theorem for continuous functions. 
very important. In short, we are going to call it IVT. IVT. What's all this? So for continuous functions, so here's an example. And here's the other example. They are the same. So let's suppose we have a function on interval a comma b. And the function on this interval either comes, comes from negative going to positive or the other option from positive going to negative. So if on this interval the function is continuous and comes from negative and goes to positive, it must cross the x-axis at a point C. We prefer a comma b to be one unit interval. As an example, negative 4, negative 3. Uh, 0, 1. It can be smaller but not bigger. So if the function comes from negative and goes to positive and it is continuous, it has to pass through 0. It cannot come from negative values, jump over 0 and go positive because it's continuous. So if the function is continuous and comes from negative values and goes to positive values, then it has to have a solution a zero between A and B. The same thing here. If it comes from positive and goes to negative, it must have a C between A and B such that F of C is zero. So this is the, our F of X. So, so here's how we present the intermediate value theorem. So, F continuous on, so this is the first hypothesis, on A comma B. Number two, either F of A positive and F of B negative, or the other way around, F of A negative and F of B positive. From these two, by IVT, there exists a C in the open, this is the one that we never used, inside the open A comma B such that F of C must be zero. So if the function is continuous and it changes sign, this is sufficient to say, well, we don't have to write all this, and it changes sign from positive to negative or from negative to positive, by the intermediate value theorem, by IVT, I will always find at least one C, one number, in the open interval A comma B, such that F of that number is zero. In other words, I'm saying there must be an x-intercept. There must be a solution. And I think I have uh, three minutes for one problem, very simple problem, and I'm going to choose, and we're going to review all this. So, for example, we have x to the fifth minus x to the third plus 3x minus 5 equals 0. They are giving us the interval 1 comma 2 and says use the intermediate. This is problem 33 on page 168. And it says, use the intermediate value theorem to show that there is a solution of the equation in the given interval. I, V, T cannot find the solution. Only points out where it is. It cannot find it. It will only say it's between 1 and 2. So number 1, I will say f continuous on the closed interval 1, comma 2, as you see, a unit interval. Yes, it's a polynomial. 
this is f of x, of course. So f of x is x to the fifth minus x to the third plus 3x minus 5 as a polynomial function. In number 2, I have to find f of 1 and I have to find f of 2. If they are both positive, IVT doesn't apply. If they are both negative, IVT does not apply. So, this time I am going to share my screen. I was dying to share my screen and show you this. So I will plug in the function. I clear everything else. And the function is x to the fifth. And then minus x cubed. And then plus 3x. And minus 5. All I want to do is just plug in 1 and 2. 1, 2. At 1, the function is negative, and at 2, the function is positive. That's all I care about. So, I don't even need to copy the number. At 1 is negative, at 2 is positive. By I, V, T, there exists C in the interval 1, 2, such that F of C is 0. That's it. We know there is a solution between 1 and 2, but IVT cannot tell us what it is.